Welcome back. The Associate Director for Employee Services at the Office of Personnel Management, Rob Shriver, says the agency will give out new guidance on locality pay soon. The agency's looking at how to pay people who work remotely and telework full time. John O'Din is senior strategist at Civic Actions. He's former DevOps engineer at the U.S. Digital Service. John, welcome back. It's good to see you again. What does long-term remote work potentially mean for locality pay, and what does it potentially mean to the employees who might be under a different pay schedule than they are today? Uh, good morning. Nice to see you again. Um, uh, there's actually quite a few changes here. Uh, just to give context, so locality pay is this whole idea that if you go to an office for work, you must live somewhere near that office. So you find people living within commute range of a set of bricks somewhere. So then locality pay is actually based on, in a lot of cases, the location of the office, not the location of the human. And so that's item one. That changes when you say someone goes to full-time telework. So if you have a building here and the employee can live somewhere else, what happens there? That's item that's one part, and it gets confused because you it comes from the idea of having two offices in different locations, and in each case, the human lives within commute range of that. Um, I will say there's other things, like whether you count cost of living to be uh, around just the cost of a house or a home, or do you count cost of living to also include things like how much does medical insurance cost in this location because there's only one provider versus insurance in other locations? Um, how much does it cost to get to a hospital? Like, is it a five-minute ride or is it a three-hour medic transport? So things like this make those numbers really, really tricky to calculate. There's another um, wrinkle here, John, that I didn't hmm. know before I read the story in FCW, and it's this. OPM distinguishes between telework, where employees can work away from the office but come in a certain number of times per pay period, and remote work, where an employee works from a completely different geographic location and doesn't come into the office regularly or at all. Mm. That seems mm -hmm. to me to be the conundrum that OPM is in that gets at the point that you made a moment ago about what stuff costs different places. Are they maybe splitting the hair too thinly there or is that a legitimate difference from the view of the employee who's thinking about where he or she lives? Um, this is... A it's, it's sort of splitting the hairs, but actually what we're doing here is we're uncovering a lot of you know, what I call legacy paperwork, for lack of a better way of describing it. We've been having people traditionally live near an office and come to an office for a hundred or so years. Um, and that's been the way it always was. Now what we're doing is we're discovering people could live further away and come in just on certain, you know, certain low cadences. You said telework could come in one day a month or one day per pay cycle or something like that. Um, when someone goes to, they don't come into the office at all, they could live beyond reasonable commute range from that physical building. There's still restrictions, like you may still have nationality citizenship restrictions, you might have um, access to data restrictions, means you have to stay inside your jurisdiction. Um, that I've hit a few cases like that I've worked on. Um, these are all things that nobody really worked through all the consequences of this before because you had to come to the office. Now that's changing. And I think it's one of the few things I think COVID is surfacing a lot of these hidden uh, loose ends that we sort of didn't really pay attention to before. Another element that is uh, surfacing as a result of what you're talking about that, uh, and something else that mm. you're considering is what does mm. this mean for the engagement piece? Of Zoom burnout is something I'm seeing tons oh. of articles, tons of coverage about. What happens to new employees yeah. who don't get the benefit of being with John for a certain period of time, even if it's just at the water cooler or whatever? All of that, what does that mean potentially for the culture of some of these organizations, John? Sure. Um, this is actually the hard part. This is where I spend a lot of my time. It's, you know, I wrote a book about it. Um, so this is where people don't get to actually meet in human contact. And it's one of the things that's important when you see people talking about wanting to go back to the office or once we're all vaccinated, we can go back to the office and those all those topics. Uh, what's actually coming up is humans miss their co-working humans. Uh, we're a social species. We like talking to each other. We like the idea to go meet someone, make jokes sitting beside someone at a meeting room table or chit chat going down the corridor, get a cup of coffee. Um, have lunch with somebody, 
this is a very human thing. And for most people, you spend more of your waking day with your co-workers than you do with your family. So to suddenly lose all that is really hard. Um, and that's true, not just in government, that's true in private industry everywhere. Uh, you can, uh, the way I've seen work most effectively for this, which I counsel, counsel people on, is to look at, you know, like Zoom burn and uh, Zoom fatigue, and I, you know, my apologies to Zoom. Uh, people rarely say this about other products. It's about video overload, really. Um, they don't have, um, people tend to look at the technology as the problem, but they don't look at what caused someone to sit in eight hours of meetings all day. That's actually a management leadership problem. It's not a technology problem. How you organize, how you communicate internally in the organization is actually how you find out we had eight hours of status meetings this week, or sorry, eight hours of status meetings this day, which meant you didn't have time to do anything else. And by the way, the last thing you want to do is get on a social chit chat video call with somebody, which means you don't have contact and you start losing contact with people, which means you start losing trust. John, a lot more I'd like to cover, but unfortunately we're out of time. Thanks yeah. very much for joining me today. I appreciate having you back.